Hi Gabsters, how are you Gabsters doing? Welcome back to another installation. Is it an installation or an installation? I don't know. Welcome to another episode of PhD series. I believe we are at number three. So welcome to PhD series number three. It's number three. I feel like those hand models. Like, oh, would you like a... Okay. Can we get serious, please? Firstly, I would... I don't know if I should be apologizing for this look or if I should be... I don't know, but I, w I was going to film a May favorites video, hence this face, but something happened, I don't know what, but I decided, hey, let me film my PhD series video, oh, this is what happened, I realized that this week is the last Thursday of the month, and I don't have a PhD series video, and I really want to do these once a month, every month, so... That is my priority, so I was like, this May favorites video can be done and it can go up on the first week of June. It will be a May favorites in June. Anyway, so that's what happened and I'm also realizing that every time I film these PhD series videos, I'm wearing this duck. I don't know if it's becoming a superstition and I don't know if I should break it or I should continue and just let it be part of the series. I don't know, Gapsters, but we'll see. You guys let me know. Should I keep the duck or should I get rid of it for the series? You guys let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to also like the video, potentially even share it. And if you're new, maybe even subscribe. What you know, what you know. <laughs> anyway, let me start. So, as you can see by the title, is on funding and it was requested by Intavi AB Tabs. Here is the video, girl. I'm sorry, it's been a while, but here's the video. You got it? Okay. Okay, we're even. We are even. The first thing I'm going to say about funding is that it gets easier. Yes, Gapsters, it gets easier. The worst funding that you could apply for when you're at school is your undergraduate. That's the worst. Especially undergraduate social sciences. I feel your pain, girl. Because it ain't going to happen. And if it does happen, you're one of a very lucky few. And undergraduate faculties have a better and an easier time getting funding for their students. But social sciences is a different story. I'm a social sciences student, so I speak mostly about social sciences. But it gets easier. Undergraduate is the hardest. Honors is slightly is harder. is easier. MA is PhD. Chances are you will get funding. I don't know if it's going to be good funding, but you'll get funding. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, so who are the funders? Where do you go? Who do you speak to? What do you say? Well, the first place to go is your university. Most universities do offer some sort of funding to their postgraduate students. Um, here at the university that I'm at, um, they offer what is called the Postgraduate Merit Award. It is based on merit, academic merit specifically. We as students are trying to change this and say that need should be another criteria. Now a lot of people are going to say, how do you assess need? Um, everybody has different types of needs and blah blah. And all I'm saying is that just because it's hard doesn't mean that it's impossible. And that if we are going to say that we want to decolonize universities, we need to start looking at things like academic excellence only because academic excellence is based on so many other things and if those things aren't in place then academic excellence is not going to be possible for many for the majority of our students and that's why I stand you all know I'm pro fees must fall anyway before the comment section blows up let me carry on so your university should offer some sort of funding um, if the university doesn't offer any sort of funding, do you need a group of protesting students? I can hook you up because your university must offer. Because government does give the university money, yes, for every postgraduate student that the university has and manages to complete their postgraduate study, government actually pays them. For PhD students, it's around 300 and odd thousand rand. So the university, you are like gold to the university. And if your university is not offering postgraduate funding, you should speak to them. 
The next place to go, of course, is government. And government does offer some form of funding. You can either go to the government department itself, like government of trade and industry, government of farming, and guys, you know what I'm talking about, tourism, and you know, pick a department, pick where your passion lies, go to that department website, see if they offer any funding, and apply. Or, there's also another type of government funding, which is actually government is one of the biggest funders of postgraduate studies and research in South Africa, and that's called the NRF, the National Research Foundation. They offer funding to students, as well as they give funding to supervisors who then use that funding to, um, who then use that, that funding either to do the research themselves or to start research project, projects where they get students to do the research for them which is the next place you go for funding, your supervisor. Now, if you get your funding via your supervisor, via a project that your supervisor is doing, you are limited in terms of potentially the choice that you can pick in terms of your research area because if you're working within a specific project, maybe your supervisor already knows what it is that they would like to find out and they say, hey, I'll give you this money if you go find this out for me. Or if you're lucky, that your supervisor could actually say, look, I'm interested in telecommunications and this specific area in telecommunications, but you ask whatever question you want to ask around that, which is great. You know, or your supervisor could say, I'm interested in aging and I'm interested in this area specifically when it comes to aging. And then you go and you figure out what question you could ask that has to do with that area and aging. I mean, there's so many questions you could ask. Why didn't I ask those questions? Huh. So your supervisor is also another place to go for funding. That also has its pros and has its cons, but those are things that you discuss with your supervisor. Okay, the next place you can go to, I'm looking at my post-its. Okay, I'm old school like that. The next place you can go to for funding is um, private companies. Private companies, specific, particularly companies around the mining industry, pharmaceutical industry, telecommunications, and anything that has to do with science, maths, or a very specific skill like engineering and those kind of things. Companies within those fields usually do have some sort of funding because they then say, once you are done with your degree, come and work for us. So it's a win-win situation. And maybe you'll discover something that will turn that company into like to a multi-billion Dollar company, mm. from rents to dollars, mm. not zim dollars either. Mm. Uh, so you can go to private companies and see if they're willing to fund you. Now, specifically about going to private companies, make sure that your research is aligned to that company's um, bottom line aka their profit or their mission statement or whatever vision vision statement mission statement aka their profit because no company is going to put money in you if they don't think that they're going to get anything out of you or out of your research so make sure that your the bottom line of the company is the same bottom line that you have it's a very important so make sure that you align your research interests with the company's profit interests you can also go to specific research institutions like the HSRC, um, we also have PARI, um, I'll give you just those two, because come on now, where's your Google game? You must know online research. Actually, no, those are the only two I can come up with right now. There's many, there's many, right? Just look for um, research institutions and they potentially offer um, research funding again. The institution probably has a specific research area that they concentrate on. Your institute is interested in um, transatlantic trade and you're only interested in Switzerland, South Africa borders, then they will not find you. Okay, because you what? Your research interest is not aligned to their research interests. So make sure that when you do make the application that your research interest actually makes sense to them. Because also at the end of the day, right, they're only able to offer you the funding because they also applied for the funding saying, ah, this is what we're going to focus on. And now they're doing research in areas that they said 
that they didn't say that they want to do research on. And then that puts them out of their way and that potentially jeopardizes their funding. But internationally, you have the European Commission. Uh, regionally in Africa, you have Carter. Um, in the USA, you have Warner Grant Foundation. Now, the last sort of three that I've mentioned are very much specific to social sciences, public health. Um, well, not the European Commission, they just do everybody, 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 everybody. But the Winner Grant specifically is more social sciences. Um, Carter also is more public health, social sciences. So um, I know mostly about those funders, so I'll speak about what I know. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Just something to keep in mind when you are applying specifically to um, European and American funders, their school. Their school calendar runs differently to our school calendar. Their school calendar starts in August and runs until the following August. Our school calendar starts in January and runs till November, December. So when they're handing out funding, they're handing out funding according to their school calendar. So people are applying and potentially know if they have funding come June, July, they know, okay, when I go to school in August, I have funding. Whereas here in South Africa, you're potentially don't even have results to apply for funding because you only get your results in December. So you only apply for funding starting school potentially not even the following year, the other year. So you need to consider um, the time gaps and the timings of your funding to make sure that you either don't lose a year in the application process or if you are going to use a, you lose a year, what are you going to do within that year? Like Just think about those things, okay? Lastly, all funding has terms and conditions, no? not criteria, terms and conditions. Terms and conditions, criteria is what do you need in order to get the funding. You need maybe to have specific marks, you need to have completed something in a certain amount of time, or those sorts of criteria. But then you have terms and conditions. Now terms and conditions are Potentially, what you need to do once you are a receiver of that funding, scholarship, grant, bursary, whatever it is that you want to call it. Um, it can be something as easy as maybe attending a workshop or a seminar once a week, once a month, or maybe they want you to work for them a few hours every week or every month. Maybe they've got a time that they want you to work for them. Or it could be something like you have to publish a certain amount of articles during your time with them or even they could potentially own the work the research that you produce and the data that you collect so make sure that you read the terms and conditions very 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 clearly because if they own that data and that work you can't leave that research and then go publish an article afterwards without their knowledge and without their consent more especially so be very careful about what it is that you're signing up for and also make sure that you can actually meet the requirements that they have of you once you're a recipient of their money. Now, also, you need to be, in South Africa for instance, you find that funding is very specific. It will either say South African nationals only or it will say um, open to other African nationals. So it's very hard to find funding, especially for non-South African nationals. I have many non-South African friends, and they're always saying, oh, every time funding pops up, it's for South African um, students, which is true. I mean, it is very hard to get funding if you're a non-South African in South Africa. However, one of the funding systems, one of the funding institutions that I know of, that I'm a part of, is um, does have funding for non-South African students and that falls under the African Pathways Program. Now, my funding falls under the umbrella body of an, of an, of an institution called um, the National Institute for Humanities and Social Sciences, which is called NISH. We call it NISH, or we call it NIHSS. And within NIHSS, they do funding for South African students, which falls under SAHUDA, which is the South African Humanities Deans Association, and they do funding for South African students. And then they also have the African Pathways um, funding, which falls under CODESRIA, and they do the funding for non-South African students. So 
there you go. Now, if you have more specific questions and um, or comments about the video, please put them down in the comments below, and I will respond to you. We can get a conversation going. We can, you know, do stuff. And I'll also put the links for um, all of the places that I've mentioned um, in the description bar below. And please don't forget, guys. Please do like the video, do comment, do share it, and if you're new. Do subscribe! Thank you so much for watching another installment of my PhD series. Bye guys!